Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another episode of Hermitcraft Season 6. Today it's time to take this guy, the, the quad brow, completely down because I mean, yeah, th this is the thing that Mambo built when we were doing the build off, uh, vi villager build off thing. And yeah, we have se seven and six days in here. But like I said, this is now coming down. I mean, this thing looks really, really cool. I, I, I gotta admit, it just... It's, it's in the middle of my walkway and it's like the brightest thing in my base, to be fair. Now, I will admit that I think it's a little bit sad to see this thing go, specifically considering that in the beginning of this season, I built Bumbo Frostoni in Mambo's base. Basically a quad mustache, quad stash, the, the quad stash. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Mambo. Now it's too late to go back on myself and, and keep this thing up. So with this finally taken care of and removed, it was truly very, very, very bright in this general area. Today's plan is to make infinite emeralds. Yep, infinite emeralds, as in nothing else required. Just input and you get infinite emeralds from nothing, created from nothing. So a little while ago, I showed you all this. You can buy three bookshelves for one emerald. In total, you can buy uh, 36 bookshelves for 12 emerald per lock trade. Now, 36 bookshelves? That's quite a lot of books. So we just bought ourselves 64 plus 44 books with 12 emeralds. Why is that important? Well, because we can sell them back to the idiot. In total, 64 plus 44 is 108 books that we just acquired for 12 emeralds. Now let's sell them back. So we can now sell these for one emerald each. I mean, one emerald? So we get one emerald per book? Yeah, we get one emerald per book, which means that we are netting, we are netting 108 minus 12 emeralds per every locked trade with this villager. I mean, that is quite ridiculous. That, that, that is, that, that must be abused. That must be abused. So my goal for today is to see if I can make an ETM, an Emerald Trading Machine, of Doom that can do this for us in the most convenient ways, similar to this thing over here, the thing that we built in the last episode with Bolo Enchanting. I'm looking for an area for the new ETM, Emerald Trading Machine of Doom. And I think that right in front of our Xbox building, right down here, is probably going to be... Pretty cool looking. So I'm gonna go with nine lecterns in this case in the floor because, wow, that looks <laughs> that looks really really cool. Um, it looks like a weird floor texture to be fair. Anyway, carpets on top and that looks a little bit weird. I may move that around, but this should provide enough lecterns for at least nine villagers. Now, I'll be honest, I completely missed thinking about one important thing. You see, not all of the villagers, not all of the librarians have the trade needed. Look at this guy, for example. I mean, he, he, he looks really, really stupid with his head over the, <laughs> over the thing. <laughs> anyway, this guy does have the bookshelf trade, as you can see here, but he doesn't have the book. And it seems to me that it's always the second tier that unlocks the book trade, and I need them to have both the bookshelf and the book trade. Now, if they don't, I do get the pleasure of pushing this button, which turns everything dark, and sending him onwards. And hopefully this thing still works. I haven't tried this out in so long, but if I click this button, we should... In theory... Yep! <laughs> there he goes! <laughs> oh, I, yeah, I, I like that machine. So a little bit later, and I've now got five villagers on top of this thing, locked in position, and hopefully able to reach all of these lecterns that I count the correct. One, two, three, four, five. Yep. Anyway, I got five villagers, and I've got 12 emeralds. Now, I want to do a little bit of a test. I want to see if I can take these 12 emeralds, and by trading bookshelves, and breaking them down, and selling them, if I can indeed generate emeralds by doing this and, and i'll be honest like i'm nervous i missed something but this should in theory just just work it should just work i think i'm done for the day and look at my inventory look at all of these emeralds <laughs> and i started with 12 emeralds nothing else i haven't added anything or anything like that and this is in one minecraft day i mean this thing is insane 
If I craft these together, that is almost two stacks of blocks of emeralds. I mean, that is much quicker than any raid farm ever, right? And it's all completely free. <laughs> this thing is insane. I love it. Emerald machine currently open. <laughs> So I decided to spend a little bit of time trying to design this thing because I built way too many things that are just out in the open and I still am not happy with it. I want to add like this thing, a stone foundation on the on or surrounding it and I want to add these things going across, but I think it looks pretty cool inside. If I if I do say so myself. And this thing here, these lights, these circus lights are actually telling me whether or not I can use it and trade with them. And one thing that I found out when I was trading with these guys was the inefficiency of breaking the bookshelves. So I needed to make sure to have a system where I can buy the bookshelves and then break them quickly. And that is what this little platform is for here. So all I gotta do now is come over here, place my bookshelves, and then use my insta mining uh, efficiency axe as i break these books down they get picked up by hopper and there's a piece of dirt in there <laughs> that's annoying and then i pick them up but i can go back and trade now ideally you want to do the book breaking off hours so whenever these lights are out i also did end up putting one more villager in here there's six villagers in here now and i think Quite honestly, I don't think it gets more efficient by having more villagers in because as you can see, yeah, I gotta make sure to not click the <laughs> click the same one. All of them except this guy here seems to be resetting. So in order to force him to reset, what I should be able to do is block his pathfinding to any other lectern because he may still remember another lectern. But by doing that, he should eventually reset. I think this is our latest edition and he may not be. Yeah, it is. Looting three. I mean, that's a pretty good trade. That's a pretty good trade. But with the lights and with the book break or bookshelf breaking mechanic, this is, as you can see, just a joy to generate emeralds. Are we out of time? No, we're still, we're still within business hours. Another very good thing with this whole machine is the glass trade, this trade here. So this is kind of like trading quartz. And I reckon instead of smelting down glass, now that we have them set up in this fa fashion, we should be able to get a lot of glass from the from the ones that trade glass and amount of books. But yeah, I think we can get quite a bit of glass by doing this very, very simply because emeralds are completely, completely and utterly generated. They're completely free in this machine. They're completely free, which means the glass is free, right? It's kind of bad now. Remember when I said that I love how villagers are changed and I love the fact that villagers are now useful and that Mojang should not nerf the behavior of being able to trade with them unlimitedly during daytime. I still think that's true. Maybe it's a little bit powerful to have both the book trade and the book in one villager. Because <laughs> I'm literally generating emeralds. And I'm not even feeling it. I'm feeling a little bit bad over it, I guess. But not really. And right now it's off hours, so the whole market, or whatever you want to call it, has shut down. I think this thing turned out really cool. The sun is slowly coming back up, and I just want to confirm that these lights are working. And... I don't know... Oh yeah, oh yeah, okay, they did turn on. So with that, these should be ready to work. I put these here because I really want this idiot to reset. Oh, he just reset! Did you guys see that? <laughs> So that is the trick. In case you have a villager that don't lose their POI, block their pathfinding. Block their pathfinding and they will eventually pick a new POI. I'm not gonna lie, it is super addictive to uh, trade with these guys. It's super addictive to see all the emeralds just pouring into my inventory, literally. I mean, in that short amount of time, did I get a stack of blocks there? Almost. How about now? Yes, I got a stack of blocks in that short amount of time. That is so ridiculous. Anyway, last time I built the genius machine, a lot of people were asking me how I did the daylight sensor. So I thought I'd show you how to configure one of these. It's actually super, super simple. All you need is two comparators, one hopper, one daylight sensor, and then you take the redstone signal from here at the very first redstone dust. So if you put a repeater down there, you have it always working to any redstone dust that you extend it with. And that sounded way too complicated, but hopefully that made sense. Anyway, the, the trick here is to subtract the uh, comparator coming out of the daylight sensor and then have a comparator on the side of that with this amount of items in a hopper. And that's what I found 
represents the time frame very very well of where they can work so that's how you get the lights to be on when they're actually able to work so to conclude i made an infinite emerald machine an infinite emerald machine and as a byproduct i have figured out the idea of selling glass for sahara so i will be doing quite a bit of trading with these guys in between episodes but for now we're gonna leave the island because green has summoned me. He has asked me to come to the Sahara meeting room. Now normally when we do these Sahara meetings I'm kind of aware of you know the fact that he wants me there and the project that we're going to be discussing. This time he didn't say and I am a little bit scared. I'm a little bit scared because I don't know if Grian is dead on the dead team yet in Demise and if this is all a trap. His skin is not dead right? It's not black and white. Grian? Yes. Hello hello hello. Hold on, just doing some changes to my chair. I don't know if I dare to come up there, to be honest. Are you... You have to be honest now. Are you Are you alive still? Please say you're alive, dude. Yes, I'm still alive. Uh, I don't know if I trust you, man. Oh my goodness, what is that chair? It's my new chair. No, look, I'm alive. I'm alive. Wait, why are okay. you wearing my face? Um, well, I th I thought that if you were dead, you wouldn't want to trap yourself. It's kind of weird, this distraction. I mean, that is looking pretty good. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's looking good. <laughs> My chair looks stupid silly now. Oh, you know, it's, it's, I think it's the right size. Wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is um, an architect meeting without Mumbo again. Yep, classic. <sighs> I mean, look at the, look at the roof. Yeah, he still has, he's not allowed back in here until he's fixed this. <laughs> you know the game of Demise, obviously, you were checking if I was alive. Yes. We need a safe room and, like, a panic room that we can go to in an emergency. Because, obviously, I don't think anyone's dead as far as I'm aware. No one's died, so no one, there's no threat at the moment. But I'm being proactive in making an, an architect bunker okay but i need some like redstoney help but i've started making it do you want to come see it yes yes has anyone told you that you look a little bit like winnie the pooh yes and i'm owning it okay come on piglet <laughs> 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 oh that's funny yeah this is it <laughs> oh i thought that you were gonna show me like a super high-tech entrance no <laughs> this is it <laughs> okay Still don't know it. if I should fully trust you. I'm, I'm not going to lie. It's... Dead. Look, look, you see this? Colour. Colour. Okay, so we are not allowed to... Yeah, okay. You're colourful. <laughs> this so looks this amazing, dude. Bunker. Wow, yeah, I, I love, love this. They've done. This oh is only the entrance. This. this is what I've been working on and it's, it's killing me. This is a massive underground room which I would like some help turning into our architect bunker safe room i love it i absolutely love it this reminds me of the good old g team g team yes days. yeah exactly. <laughs> i love it okay so, so i've created two beacons here which hopefully will give strength and resistance but the thing is if they're just on they're going to give away the location of the bunker oh, like yes. that so kind of need like a panic button that turns them on and releases the uh, like opens them up to the air yeah. So in, in a bad situation, we run down here, we hit the button, we get our strength and regen, and we run into the safe room over here. This, I'm hoping, will be a big space where we can, like, create traps. So obviously, I'm being a little bit ahead of the game, because when the dead team start, like, leaving traps everywhere, if they try and, like, get inside here to lay a trap, We'll have traps of our own oh, yes. to get them. So that's the whole purpose. This is a proper safe room. So I'm like, I'm imagining, Archie, I don't want to give away all my secrets in case you die. <laughs> you, you, you never know. You're, you, you're a friend, twist. but you're also <laughs> potentially an enemy. Yeah, don't, don't give away any secrets, but I kind of get the idea. And again, I'm getting real good G-Team days vibes right here. That was really hard for me to say as a Swedish man. Yo. G team is back. But this is, is this back. is an architect bunker. Mumbo, Mumbo is gonna be like, what's going on, guys? Yeah, he's got he's got on travels. He signs up for the demise game and then he disappears for ten yeah. days. I mean, that's that's the best way not to die. Yeah, is to just is. not turn up. 
Architect Bunker. Genius. Absolutely genius. And since Grian indeed was still on the live team, I don't think I need this disguise anymore. Uh, so Grian wanted me to install the redstone for these hidden beacons. And then he also wants me to do some sort of entrance. <laughs> In classic Grian fashion, <laughs> this thing is... This thing is absolutely not centered. Absolutely not centered. That's <laughs> that's funny. Anyway, the point with the beacons, to reiterate, is that we should be able to press a button and that turns the beacons on in case of emergency. And to do that, if we want it to be completely flushed with the surface, we need a double piston extender hidden inside this tube. It shouldn't be too hard to do this. So in theory... Something like this should work. We've got two ticks longer on this, on these two pistons than that piston. And that should be a piston extender. Yep. So that's beacon visible. And that's beacon completely hidden. So now all I gotta do is link that block up to a T flip flop down in the bunker. And that would be this beacon done. Now, whereabouts would the other one be? I wonder if it is perfectly aligned it should be right there on that torch right so let's see the second one should just be exactly the same so input there for now and then just that and that is the top so the lever and boom and completely flush nice now finding an area to wire this up turns out to be a little bit tougher than expected because apparently there is stuff behind here there is a big weird room is this the that this is the the jangler catch room is it yeah it is <laughs> i remember this oh my goodness this room look absolutely amazing but that makes it a little bit difficult i better put this back the way it was it makes it a little bit difficult to find a way to have the button because originally i was gonna have it on this wall here so after a lot of fiddling with space and installing a T flip flop in a one space wall behind here, I think we can make this work. So I'd have this gray go all the way up and then hide the redstone torch there, torch tower. And if I press this button, this should now work. Yes, that works. Okay, that works. I mean, this was the easiest circuit in the world. It was just a little bit tricky to fit where where we could hide the circuit without ruining anything else. So, uh, maybe a little bit too overly happy about it. But anyway, Grian wanted strength to be one of the things and then resistance to be the other. And resistance too is actually... Yeah, it's a quite powerful... It's a quite powerful defensive buff. But I gotta say, because we're not gonna be fighting with our sword, I think it'd be better to have speed to here. So I'm just going to change this for speed 2 and then Green can change it back if he wants to. And I think this covers it up really well. So now if we push the button, this is working fine. And then we push the button again and it shuts off. That's that's really, really cool. And it feels like it fits the bunker as well. Maybe I'll change the white up for something else later. Uh, but anyway, Green also wants me to do the entrance. And this is one that I'm going to have to think about a little bit because it's probably going to take me a little bit of time to do. And I've got a message. I've got a very, very, very scary message. Well, that's wrong to say. It's potentially scary because of Demise. I've got a message from Stress Monster to travel to my Hermitville base. What is it with people and just messaging to travel to places and meet up with things? It's, it's, it's really scary. One of these days, I'm going to make this place a little bit more homely it is absolutely chaos absolutely chaos in here anyway there is a book hello hello batman oh no uh oh i forget what what else it was called anyway there is a book here fear is called do you fear the unknown head on over to the giant jack-o-lantern to conquer or demise this fear i'll leave a sign for you lol are you are you kidding me? So, last episode, I built a trap in her base. I didn't say that it was me, though. I wonder if she pushed that. If she did, she would know that it was a positive trap. She's basically using what I used on her in reverse. 
Before I head over there, have we sold anything? Not a single thing. Well, I am in need of some rockets, so... I will just get myself some rockets. I love this thing. Oh, there's a new game coming up right there. And Cubfan has done these really, really, really cool walls on the uh, Ravager run. Oh, I see it. <laughs> I see it. <laughs> oh my goodness. That looks absolutely, that looks absolutely fantastic. It's called stand on the trapdoor and push the button. Do you fear the unknown? Don't look down. You got this. Oh, come on. Is Stress Monster dead? I don't think you're supposed to trap people if, if you are alive. But I don't know if she's dead or not yet. I'm not gonna lie, I'm super scared. I'm asked to push a button on top of a trapdoor inside a giant pumpkin. But I'm gonna trust that this is not gonna kill me because it says you got this and a heart. Chicken, what, what do you reckon? What, what do you think? Do you think this is a bad idea? Your face is stupid. I mean, I should, in theory, as long as there's no lava down there, I should, in theory, be fine with my totem of undying. Uh, oh, I fear the unknown. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm okay. I'm okay. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I didn't bring any torches. I can't see anything down here. Um, okay, there are two signs here. Hold on. Let me light this up with my diorator. Now that you have proven to not fear the unknown, fancy helping me with some redstone in my gorgeous game? <laughs> fancy helping me with some redstone in my gorgeous game? Oh my goodness, <laughs> that, 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 come on. This was quite genius. It has had me being very scared for the past few minutes and I mean, she could have just asked, but she, she decided it's it's a little bit of a payback for for me building the traps in her base and in other space. I really wonder who who has pushed the buttons in the, in the did do you fear the unknown traps? I have no idea. Anyway, as I was climbing up here, I found this little area, which I'm assuming is the start of her game, because there are no blocks in here. Uh, I don't know if I'm spoiling anything. I'm not going to push the button, but. I guess I'll, I'll guess I'll, I'll accept, <laughs> without much more knowledge, I'll accept to be part of this minigame thing and do some redstone stuff. I, I, I like to do redstone stuff with minigames. I think that's quite fun. Um, I guess I'll, I'll reach out to her on Discord. I gotta say, well played stress and, and what a, what a cool, what a cool pumpkin. <laughs> Certainly taking dominance in this general area right over here. But anyway. That's going to do for today, ladies and gentlemen. I do hope that you have enjoyed this episode. And if you did, do hit the like button down below. If you're brand new, consider subscribing. And I will see you dudes in the next episode.